Well, next up we have uh, Brandon Kelly and Jared Price, uh, both from American Municipal Power. Uh, Brandon is the uh, Chief Information Officer uh, of American Municipal Power and has held a number of different positions over the years. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, you're presently an instructor as well at ITT, is that correct? Yeah. Amongst a lot of other things, very, very active person. With him today, Jared Price is the current IT director at uh, American Municipal Power and also heavily involved in IT Martini in uh, both Columbus and Cincinnati. And you've been, so I think every other city we've been to as well. Well, we're going to continue here at uh, IT Martini 22, Infrastructure We Trust. Um, thank you all for being patient. We're going to get started here. Uh, we've uh, had a number of great tracks so far, um, and the strategy track and the technology track, a lot of great sessions. I really, really enjoyed the keynote. Um, we're going to uh, go over these at 5 o'clock, uh, briefly, with the conference retrospective. Um, of course, all of you uh, conference attendees will be getting a, a drink tokens courtesy of our uh, presenting sponsor, Peak 10. Uh, and then uh, during the retrospective, there'll be more opportunities to get even more drink tokens for the reception that officially starts at 5.30, but for conference attendees starts at 5. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Brandon and Jared. Thank you very much, guys. Round of applause for these guys. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. As Aladdin mentioned, my name is Brandon Kelly. I'm the Chief Information Officer for American Municipal Power. Um, what, what you're going to see here between Jared and I is I'm going to go and give you a little bit about American Municipal Power to put it in context, talk a little bit about how uh, we got to this topic based around me joining the organization and developing a strategy and a vision for us to go forward. Uh, a little quick uh, tidbit here. A couple days ago, Jared comes to me and goes, hey, we need, a, we need to practice and figure this whole thing out. And I said, well, if I have to figure out what my vision is, what my strategy is and what our organization is, I probably shouldn't deserve to work there. Uh, maybe you need to practice yours, but I'll be perfectly fine. Uh, so here's the introductions. Uh, Jared, he's over, I, I'm the CEO, as I mentioned. Jared's over, uh, our, organ, our IT organization is structured in a way. Jared's over our infrastructure, which includes our help desk, our data centers, telecom network, uh, et cetera. A little bit about AMP. AMP is a nonprofit utility, which is a little different. When you think about electricity, you think about uh, your electric bills you're paying, and it's, uh, there's a, there's a, they're expensive, and you probably complain about that. But we are a nonprofit utility. What we are is a wholesale power provider, uh, and we deliver to municipal electric systems. So, what that means is cities, townships, and municipalities that have a public power presence. So, a good example would be here in Ohio, the city of Hamilton, not, not far from here. Uh, the city of Cleveland, Bowling Green, we actually service uh, seven states. Uh, this is uh, in 129 members, and we service Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, and then uh, six uh, agencies in Delaware through the uh, Delaware Municipal Electric Corporation. If you put our whole uh, service ter territory together, we service about uh, 625,000 and continuing to grow customers. Uh, AMP's vision, we want to develop, manage, and supply a diverse, competitively priced, reliable wholesale energy to public power through strategic partnerships and member-focused relationships. Our vision is to be the public power leader in wholesale energy supply. Uh, some, some facts here, we were founded in 1971, our 2010, uh, which now we do have 2011, so I'm not sure why. I, didn't include those. We have $5.4 billion in assets on the books and we have revenue upwards of uh, $820 million now. Uh, and we have, a, and you'll see in a minute, we have about another $4 billion in, in construction projects underway uh, as well. And construction projects means building power supply, uh, generating facilities. We are, the difference between us and probably who you pay your electric bill to is we are not a load-serving entity, so what that means is we, we supply the power to that city, that township, that municipality, to their, to their edge, and then they are responsible for the distribution. So they take it to the home or to the business or to the factory. Uh, and, uh, and here's a, the last slide there. We sell power for what it costs to generate it, plus the services overhead, things like IT uh, and accounting and, 
and the number of other services we offer. The other thing I'll mention here before we move on is we don't, our, our only service is not just providing electricity to those members. We provide a number of different services, whether it's engineering, uh, SCADA services, uh, just uh, forestry, all kinds of con uh, consulting type services that are around the utility space we, we give uh, to those members. Our generation portfolio is very diverse. We do pretty much everything but nuclear. I won't go through this. One of the things that's uh, very interesting is we did build the first wind farm, our first commercial wind farm in Ohio, that's in Bowling Green. And we currently have the largest set of run on the river hydro projects in the country. So we are very focused on that renewable clean energy. Uh, we are in the process of finalizing our first solar uh, facility, which is in Napoleon, Ohio as well as a number of power purchase agreements with other uh, solar facilities as well. Uh, from a technology standpoint, we look at technology, that I'm really responsible in two areas. So information technology, which is probably everything everyone and here knows about is that's the stuff that you do every day, and then operations technology. So our, our IT is our ERP and, and our market and settlements, our IPS, all that stuff we deal with every day. And then our OT, which is operations technology, is our SCADA system, which SCADA supervises control and data acquisition. Uh, that's the systems we use to monitor electric uh, generation, uh, output, as well as consumption on the other end, as well as do some controls of our electric grid. Uh, and then our control systems that run our power plants, the, the, tech, the meters that are out in the field, uh, as well as our historical data so we can do uh, forecasting and things like that. And, and kind of predict what the requirements would be in the future. Uh, so let's talk about the AMP strategy and how we got to the point where we knew we had to come up with this data management um, strategy. So from AMP strategy, I, I'm fairly new, new to the organization. It'll be three years in June, or excuse me, in August. Uh, we wanted to transform IT to a customer member focused organization. So historically, we were just like many other IT organizations, meaning we were looked at as a necessary evil. Uh, they wanted, when I took the role, they wanted to become an equal business leader. So you have all your other leaders within the different uh, places within AMP. They wanted the IT to have that, you know, what we always talk about, we've heard a lot this morning, that place at the table. The other thing is we wanted to, you know, we needed to provide our, our, our staff, our members, and our board of trustees with systems and services that provide you know, that, that sophistication needed to run a company like ours, but needed to be very simple to maintain. And I know that's kind of like two, two different things, but so what that means is we needed to come up with enterprise architecture standardized across the board. And this is, was very unique, very unique because a lot of uh, large organizations our size are, are definitely not there yet. And it's specifically our industry, the regulations we have to go over is I develop with the team, we will think cloud and or as a service first strategy. Meaning, we have to look at what we're doing and, and when a new project comes up or a refresh comes up, we need to decide then if we're going to build it in-house. But before we even do that, we need to find out if, if we can put it in the cloud or buy as a service, whether that's the platform or software as a service, etc. Of course, we want to create transparency between, uh, between IT and the business. We want, there's nothing that we should be doing that's hidden. There's nothing that they should be doing that's hidden. We should be, uh, we should be equal partners and together. And we, as always, as an organization, we will stay very, very member focused. Member, the membership funds our organization. Therefore, if it's not for the benefit of the members, it's not worth doing. Um, so, so I inherited when I took over a very outdated infrastructure, very siloed systems, systems that weren't integrated, systems that were very hard to manage. And so, we wanted to develop that common platform. So, you know, we say we're going to provide sophisticated systems that are very easy to manage. We want a single platform. So. One of the things I inherited was we were a Lotus Notes version from 2004 that might have worked 60% uh, of the time. We were on Novell Netware, which, you know, they hadn't, I think it was the 2006 version or even maybe sooner, and it was barely staying together. And we had a very archaic backup server, ArcServe. And, and our backups, which Jared will be a part of his presentation, it was just a very uh, it was like this, 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 these set of servers get backed up here, these set of servers, like one guy comes in with a magic wand once a month, maybe gets those backed up. These servers never get backed up, or when they do, it, it, no one could ever get them restored. And so, so here I want, and we have thick PC laptops and applications. We, when, when a business needed an application or a power plant needed an application, they just went out and bought it and they created a silo. 
So this is kind of what we inherited here. And then so the initiatives, we wanted to, I wanted all out gated or unsupported hardware out of the out of the uh, out of our out of our company. And uh, easier said than done because it's expensive to do something like that. So what we did is we took Lotus Nodes, we put Exchange in the cloud, we did Novell to Active Directory with System Center. Jerry will talk a lot more about that. We took on uh, ArtServe to Combar with some EMC stuff in the background. We did uh, we did a mobile rollout for man mobile device management. Uh, which was in the cloud. We did that EMC project I mentioned, and uh, we had a very we have a prior to some of the initiatives we've gone now. We had a from a business, so we were very good at disaster recovery. We spent like six million dollars two years ago to be able to recover our systems. But this disaster recovery just gets systems up and running. We weren't very good at business continuity, and that's really what matters, right? We need to send bills out. We need to pay bills. We need to receive money. And we need to dispatch electricity. If, if, if we get all the systems up, but if, as a business we cannot function, we cannot bring people together, we're not able to do that. And that's where the uh, virtual desktop and the adoption of uh, the mobility and some of the platforms and things that's kind of all going, it's not completely there yet, will allow us to continue to do that. So there's a number of the systems that we implemented to help build that porch uh, foundation of infrastructure. Uh, you know, I believe that, there are, that I, this is my belief. If you don't put a Gardner quote in one of your presentations, it has no credibility. So we threw this in here just to, just to add some credibility. And it talks about, you know, how the hybrid cloud, and I won't read that to you, but the idea that it's not, it's not one way or the other. It's, it's looking at it the kind of way we do is we, we try to get in the cloud first, but we ultimately know that things aren't. So we have hard, we have a hard lungs too, it's our SCADA system. That stays in four walls, locked up, very tight. It's on our hardware, and, and it's not gonna ever at least in this foreseeable future that I can predict go outside there. But things like financial systems, you know, even though uh, some people would disagree, our CFO is very billable to it, our email system, et cetera, we can, we can give those to people who are better equipped to support those. Uh, so as I mentioned, cloud is first. So some of the things we're doing, we're taking e-business, we're moving that to Oracle One Demand. Uh, do we want to become the best people to ever run a financial system? Probably not. What we want to do is be able to strategically think about systems and how we can enable business that allows us to build and run power plants, uh, et cetera. We were, this is all the stuff that's either in the system or in, in, in the cloud or in transition to get there. So we've aggressively done that. Thank you, Brandon. So as Brandon talked about, you know, we had a number of challenges. And I, I've been at AMP for a little over a year now. And uh, can anyone hear me OK? Out there? OK. Uh, and, and so I was brought in, Brandon brought me in to help to address those challenges in the infrastructure. And one thing I would add to you know, what Brandon had said about uh, data and asking people to delete things. And it, it's common, I think it's a common practice coming from an infrastructure side and a server admin side that when you're asking people uh, the storage admins and, and system admins are always like, well, we got too much stuff out there, we need to put quotas on things, we need to ask people to get rid of things. You're asking people to take time out of their day to do things to help you and IT and clean things up. And I'm, I'm totally not against keeping a clean house, but uh, those things take away from their productivity. And at the end of the day, what's our most expensive resource? Most people will tell you it's the people. The people are our most expensive resource. So we, at the end of the day, we want them to be able to focus on what they do best, which is their jobs, and enable them to do that. And so we want to allow them to be flexible to allow them to do things. So a lot of what cloud and infrastructure things are happening today, and we'll talk about an angle what we're doing, allows us to take away some of that uh, management overhead for both those people and our IT staff, and allow them to focus on projects because we've got a huge pipeline of things that we're trying to do. So one of our ba major challenges with Brandon is that data sprawl. We had data everywhere, some of it was being backed up, some of it wasn't. Um, islands of data throughout uh, everywhere. Uh, we overbought and we overprovisioned our storage. You say, well, how can you do that? Well, because we didn't know what our performance needs truly were. We didn't know what our capacity needs truly were, meaning that we were buying storage uh, based on what we saw as a full one took up or a, or a disk or a virtual machine took up, but not understanding that a lot of that may be just cache space or swap file space or duplicated data or information that can be uh, you know thinned down and there's a lot of wasted space in there. So we had to overbuy. Systems were difficult to manage, so we had systems that were uh, required storage and expertise, which is 
specialized, more specialized expertise. We had to rely on specialized people to do that. Uh, and anything we needed to do other than very basic things, we had to do like good and that kind of stuff needed to be done there. So now kind of flashy, you know, easy to use, easy to understand, really interface. And then finally, and this all the other things kind of lead into this, is that our systems were not flexible. So we couldn't do things like BDI, we couldn't do things like mobile device storage management, we couldn't do that kind of stuff with our existing systems. So <clears throat> again, I'm gonna put the uh, the, the catchy Gartner quote in here. And this, something, another thing you may not know, or you may know this, is Gartner recently had an infrastructure summit back in May, and a lot of these quotes came out of that, and they made some predictions. I always love reading through the Gartner predictions, because it's very interesting. And I think at one point, Gartner made a prediction that, you know, over such such a time period, in the next two or three years, we're going to do away with uh, mobile devices, with laptops and desktops, and iPads going to replace everything, and we're not going to use it. And that kind of, it seems like they kind of backed up a little bit, and, a, a different stance is that we don't see desktops and laptops going away. What we do is we see pe more people uh, using mobile devices to access applications. We see that today. We see iPads being that hub where I can just click an application. I don't need to click start, go to programs, find it. That's just right there. So they see that and they say that companies using these devices, these tablets, including for bring your own device strategies, some of you may have those, should recognize there's a lot of unmanaged storage in tablets and smartphones. They should be managed big surprise. You give people tablets they want to use and they want to store stuff on. So uh, we see that coming. So uh, two of the solutions that we took uh, and, and added to our uh, systems to manage that storage, our primary side, we, we partnered with the MC and, and purchased the BMX storage. And on the disaster recovery, the business continuity and, and long-term retention side, we purchased uh, Commvault Symphony and a suite for our information management. So start with the VNX and what flexibility, what kind of things we gained from that. Number one, we gained a single pane of man management. So we were able to manage not only through Unisphere, which is their single pane of glass management, very user friendly. Uh, I could take my server admins and, and they, they were immediately uh, could see where there were wizards, different things to do things. So it wasn't like we had to hire a storage admin to, to, to configure everything and to do basic administration tasks. Uh, and then if they didn't want to do that, it also had the flexibility to integrate with VMware's existing tools. So now, you know, my guys can take and do a lot of their, I can take my server admins, they can do a lot of their tasks that they typically would do in VMware, and oh, by the way, they can manage a lot of the storage administration.